update on the BSA. It might be a while before we get another update on this, but I've done a few things. First of all, I've fitted the gearbox. It's only loosely in at the minute, just to make sure how things line up and everything. Uh, also, I've managed to get these bolts to line up. How did I do that? I loosened all the engine bolts again. So there's my top tip for this exercise, putting the gearbox and the engine in, is don't tighten up any of the engine bolts until everything is in. And then you get the ability to jiggle it around and make sure everything lines up. So you didn't have to open that hole out and think it's all lined up, it's all in. Kickstart clears this by about a fraction of a millimetre, which I'm not sure if that is right or not, but uh, and I can't have the footrest further forward, which might not be a problem because I'll probably have them in the backward position anyway. Um, but yeah, that's that. I fitted the proper centre stand spring. <laughs> now, I tried the, you may know about the washer trick and everything, and putting washers or pennies in between all of these gaps, but I tried that. I had it stacked full of washers both sides and it still wasn't extended enough. And of course, even when I did that, uh, as soon as I tried to pull the spring a bit more, all the washers fell out anyway. So the only way I've ever successfully fitted one of these is actually to disconnect the centre stand, to take the shaft out of the middle, take the centre stand off, put the spring on, and then kind of use the strength of... Well, it's a lot easier to pull on the spring when you're pulling on the centre stand. But, um, yeah, that wouldn't have, made a, wouldn't have made a good video. There was quite a lot of grunting to get that in, but it's in. Uh, so, yes, these are all loosely positioned head steady. Um, the next thing was the oil tank, which I bought, and in the end I bought another older kind of rusty battery tray because I didn't want to mess up the other one. I put it in upside down. I'll bring the camera around in a minute, but it, this, fit, this will fit in here nicely, just like that. I think that's going to work just fine. The only problem is, on, I'll get the camera and you can see, The only problem is that the, the bolts here are, the heads are too big, so there's not actually enough room to get bolts on both sides to, to hold that battery tray in. Uh, where are we looking? Yeah, in there, in. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyway, there's not enough room. Yes, not see there, see here. Here, there's not enough room for the bolt heads. So what I'm going to do, I think, is just thin down those bolt heads. Um, and then I should be able to get four of those in. What else have I done? Uh, I finally managed to locate a back brake, back brake lever. That was the good news. The bad news is I had to buy two more wheels that with it that they were it was attached to a back wheel. I ended up buying two more wheels, which was good because I got a nice new front hub too. I have got one of these quick action throttles, but nothing connected up yet. Still no front brake cable. Um, got one, I think I've got the right one on its way. What else have I done while you weren't looking? Um, so I guess the last thing, which is why we might not see this bike for a while, is I've got the brake lever. This is the one that goes to the footrests, and this is the pivot for it. But there's nowhere for it to go in the frame. And I've, I looked all over at the parts diagrams and pictures on the internet and everything. I couldn't find anything. I did eventually find a picture, which I will put in the video, which there should be a hole here with a bush for this to mount on, and then the brake pedal goes about there, something like that. So, <clears throat> yeah, I've got to have a bush. But I'm not up to that kind of welding, so I'm not going to do it. I'm going to get the person that helped me with the welding before. The other thing, of course, is... So I've been talking to Bob Newby about a new clutch for it, which is the idea. Um, but this, of course, it's a, it was a magneto engine, then it's been converted to an alternator engine. I wanted to run it back on Magneto again, but this shaft is really long and the standard outer cover won't fit. So I don't have an alternator outer cover, which is a pain. 
Um, so I'm just going to fit a clutch on it, might run it just open just to get it going to start with, make sure everything's okay. But of course the proper way to do it is to completely dismantle the engine, get a different, either a different hole crank or a different spindle for the crank and have the crank rebuilt. So, ha, not quite sure what I'm going to do about that. I really don't want to butcher this crank because that's criminal to do that. So, yeah, I'm going to keep looking out for an alternator case cover and I might just run it covered over but without an alternator. I'm not really bothered by that. In the short term, I can run it with the points, put a coil on it and um, run it total loss. Just stick a small lithium battery somewhere. So, I think that's about the latest news. Um, I've ordered the tank. It's a trials type tank, sort of C15 style. I believe that I can make it fit onto the frame. And uh, yeah, we'll have to see. So I'm going to get on with the, uh, not for the British bike fans I know, but I'm going to get on with the uh, the Nordwest this weekend, I think. So uh, yeah, hope you're safe out there. Keep liking and subscribing and all that stuff and commenting and uh, Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time. Identity safe, they're hidden behind the light bulb here. <laughs>
I've just got back from having the uh, extra hole put in the frame for the uh, the rear brake, which I'm really pleased about. You can see the detail on the other camera, hopefully. But uh, yeah, this fits lovely. It just needs a little bit of painting. And I decided I'm gonna order some Tecaloid paint, which is the paint to use for painting frames, just to see what that, how that works. But yeah, that is a lovely job on there. I'm really pleased with that. And uh, then when I've got home, there's a parcel here, which is very exciting. So I'm gonna have a look. Can you see, Let's just check, you can see this. I'm gonna see what's coming here because it's quite a big package. I have an idea of what some of it is, but. I've also been told off by my sound advisor that um, Ted's been using auto level on the sound recorder. And uh, yeah, trying to set it manually this time. So yeah, well, keep an eye on what's going on with the sound there, Ted. So yeah, the really exciting thing, I'm hoping the really exciting thing, is going to be this. And I know it's a bit early to be putting these piece, this piece on, but I want to see what it looks like. What do you think? I'm going to keep it in this plastic bag for now. But see roughly where the. Might have to do some modification. This is actually designed for a C15. So, what does that look like? Oh, I like that. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Okay, what else have I got? <clears throat> I think this is levers or levers or controls, whatever your preference is. They're nice. Very nice. So Give you a close-up view with the other. Shall I give you a close-up with you? No, you don't need to see this. It's not that interesting. But shiny clutch lever. Which ones I got? The ones without the adjusters, which I hope are the right ones. Yes, people that are, want absolutely original everything, then please look away now because these are not. They're original style, but oh, I like that. And I've got a brake lever. I'll put that on a minute because I've already got a brake lever on there for now. What else have I got? This is, what's that? Oh, that's a fuel cap. <laughs> fuel cap and um, some other small pieces. So, fuel cap. This is the little pin for the front brake. There are two of them, I don't know why two. Uh, there's a fuel tap. And 
small piece of hose. What's that? Oh, this, uh, I think this is the mounting bolt for the center, so different for C15, but I'm sure I can make that work. So that's, this is the, what's it called? The pin that goes through the brake lever. Just check that fits. And it doesn't, it's just gonna need a drill to go through the brake lever. And last but not least, uh, oh, there's some stickers for the tank. I think that looks cool. A uh, speedo cable and a front brake cable. Let's hope this is the right front brake cable. And the piece that is missing is the... So there's a piece missing which is the clevis pin thing. Which means I still don't have a front brake. Yeah, this is the old lever. Just put it on. Just see if it's going to be roughly the right length. Uh, not through there. Through here. It's a little bit long, but I can cope with that. But I, just, I think that they've missed, they've given me two of the... What did they do? I've got a bag with two of these things in, as opposed to, I was only expecting one. And a clevis pin. Let's have a look at the list of parts. Speeder cable. Clevis pin two. Hmm. I have to check the order. Um. So yeah. Pile of bits to fight, fit. The uh, the tank's going to be interesting. I think I think that looks nice. I'm going to take the I'll take the plastic off, of course. It's very dinky. I'm not in planning to do any long range riding on this bike. And. Uh, The bolt doesn't quite line up, but that's that's fine. I'm sure I can make that work. Something like that. What do you think? I think it looks all right. So uh, onwards and upwards. 